tonight won the Daily Double. The feature, the eighth, the ninth, and uh, the chip. <laughs> All right. So come. Come into the Schaefer Circle. Bobby Taylor, Gene Hart, back at the Northlands Coliseum in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Flyers leading the Oilers one to nothing after the first period of play. And the National League scoring leaders, Marcel Dion, way out in front, 94 points, Lafleur 89, Dave Taylor 72, and the youngster Wayne Gretzky is starting to make his move. One point behind the injured Taylor in fourth place and. I know he'd love to pick up a couple of points here against Philadelphia and to move up in this coin, but more important to help out his team and maybe come up with a point or two here tonight. Bobby, there seems to be the general feeling now that Lafleur might be unstoppable with Dion minus his two wingers, uh, Simmer and Taylor with leg injuries, and uh, without those two, Dion obviously should not score at the same pace he's doing now, and that'll give Lafleur a great opportunity to catch him. I think what it does is the fact that before, Dion, everybody keyed on the one man. So that allowed Simmer and Taylor to come up and pick up the slack and score. But now, with uh, Dion, or pardon me, with Simmer and Taylor, a uh, potent scoring machine as well, they cannot key on just one man on that whole line. They have to key on all three of them. They have to watch them extra close. Well, with both of them out, Marcel Dion, I believe, will get a lot of extra attention. The play of Pete Peters in the opening period was remarkable. He didn't have that much work, but he had a, a trio of a, or a quartet of what Bob calls ten bell saves. Well, sometimes it's not the quantity of shots, but the quality. And Edmonton had an awful lot of good quality shots. Peters very strong. What's very good about him so far in the game is that he's always in position, he's anticipating well, and he's got great concentration on the puck. All right, we'll start the second period with Jim Corsi to our left and to our right, the aforementioned Pete Peters. Corsi came here from the Quebec Nordiques. He was let go a week into training camp. Edmonton picked him up. He went down to their Houston farm team. And then when uh, Dave Dryden retired, Corsi was called up here to back up Eddie Mio. Colin Campbell is back on defense on the left side in this opening ship, Bob. He has a birthday tomorrow. And again, a former teammate of, you, uh, of yours that was affectionately called Soupy as is everybody almost with a Campbell surname. Including the famed Philadelphia all-time broadcaster, Bill Campbell. All right, Flyers have the draw at center ice. Norm Barnes, throw, and he's got prop going in all alone. Going in on the forehand, he's hooked from behind, and it was an excellent penalty. Otherwise, Proppy goes in and perhaps opens this up to 2-0 lead, and it'll be Dave Hunter, and that's what you call a fine, fine penalty. Well, it's something that can uh, save a goal or possibly an excellent shot on goal, and when Prop gets in front, and all alone, one-on-one, -on -one, the goalie, you know, he doesn't miss very often. But he could not get the puck back on his forehand as Hunter had hooked him. He'll get off for uh, hooking. 11 seconds in time of the penalty, and the Flyers will be quickly onto their second power play of the game. But Dave Hunter came from nowhere off his left wing position to get back and at least take away a good scoring opportunity from Brian Propp. Hunter picks up 57 penalty minutes on the season. Edmonton's fifth penalty of the nine call by Ron Harris. Flyers one for four on the season against Edmonton and 0 oh for one tonight on the power play. Now they've got Linsman. Beautiful pass to Prop, but he doesn't shoot. Goes back instead to Clark at the right point. Along the boards to Prop. There's a shot save, and Herbergart was right there. Just was a half a stride away from a sure goal rebound tap. Edmonton ices, and Clark is back there again with Daly, and up front they have Lintzman with Vermegaard and Prop with Lintzman storming up the middle now at the Edmonton line, cuts to the near side, drops back to the point to Daly, to the middle of the ice, in front, looking for Prop, it's wide to the far boards, Clark takes it down, offensive right wing corner, to the point to Prop, Prop hold into the slot, shoots left side to... Lintzman trying to go back to prop through traffic, but it's cleared by Vermegaard back to the point to Daly. Right circle pass to Clark at the blue line along the far boards to prop into the slot. Straight away to Clark. He's in. Drive over the top of the net and rebounds from behind the net off the far boards in the center ice. Now it's fed cleanly off the near side. 
by the Flyers, and up ice comes Prop over the line again along the near side, waiting for help to the point to Leach, back to the near side to Clark to the right boards, Daly near side, Leach scores into the open net. Oh, beauty! Power play goal, and it's two to nothing. Flyers moving the puck around extremely well. They just really were playing tic-tac-toe for Edmonton. Edmonton stayed in their defensive box situation, but the Flyers trying to set up that man on the opposite side of where most of the players were. And they did it very well as Daly's cross rink pass right to Leach. Of course, he was way out on the angle, expecting the shot from the point. No shot came, the pass came, and Leach, all he had to do was fire it into the open net high, and the Flyers take the 2-0 lead on the power play. Well, the two Bobs, Clark and Daly, get the assist on Leach's 32nd goal of the year. And for Reggie on the power play, that gives him number three. Ice offside coming into the zone. And again, to the Flyer Wise Charity Fund, $100 from Schaefer Beer. That figure throughout the month of January and February for every Flyer's goal continues to mount. Excellent pass by Daly, who has been playing a very heads-up game, uh, even though he's been slowed a little bit the last couple of times. Games, rather, with the uh, a bad cold and, and stuffiness in the head. He criticized Corsi for being so far out to his left on the, on the uh, Daly play because he had a scramble 10 feet. And Leach, here goes McLeishan on the breakaway. He's grabbed from behind by Fogelin. And up ice comes Edmonton. Callaghan trying to get through, and he does to McDonald. He get a right circle drive. Off the right shoulder of Pete Peters. That one was sticking it. Calligan overskates to the far side. McLeish gets it to the blue line, and it's accidentally tapped off the stick of Campbell in the center ice by B.J. McDonald. Driven back in to the far corner to the right of the Philadelphia net and taken out by Ben Wilson and into center ice. Tommy Gorens has skated off. Gorens is out with Hill and McLeish, and defensively Barnes with Ben Wilson. Hoagland back on the defense with Colin Campbell for Edmonton and up front. They have Gretzky, McDonald, and Calligan. There goes Ben Wilson trying to go through. Hope checked away back in the center ice by Edmonton Spogelin. Into the Philadelphia zone. It's played off the far boards to Al Hill by Barnes. Flyers circling back and trying to get up ice along the far boards. Ben Wilson to Barnes. Finally comes into center ice. We've played two and a half minutes into the second period. Flyers lead 2-0. The goal by McLeish. First period power play goal by Leach. Flyers are just fooling around endlessly at their own line, and you figure sooner or later they better start heading up ice. They do. Hill over the line. Tries to get inside. Fogelin just skated off as the puck tipped behind the Edmonton net. Back to the near point to DuPont. Skips past him, and he cuts off McDonald as the puck slides all the way down into the Flyers zone to the left of Peters. Wrapped up by Ben Wilson to the far side. Right to Calligan. He's got an open man. Shoots in front. And Peters grabs and keeps the rebound away from Wayne Gretzky. 16-55 remaining second period. Flyers 2, Edmonton no score. Okay, you got Knock it off. Got a big job to do yeah, today. Right, Coco, We're going to get this locker room in shape oh, and looking oh, real yeah, pretty. Yeah, and to make it easy on you meatheads, we're going to use MAB Rich Lux Wall Shield because it's tough and good looking. Like you, Fenwick. <laughs> MAB Rich Lux Wall Shield. From the most colorful team in town. Your MAB paint stores and dealers. Save by Pete Peters was more difficult than it appeared. Callaghan was at a very difficult angle, but just as he let the shot go, Gretzky went right in front of the division of Pete Peters and might have taken his concentration a little bit. Messier up there with Chipperfield goes to Kevin Lowe at the point. Fans on his shot. Chipperfield to the side of the net to Messier along the offensive left wing boards for Edmonton. Behind the net to Connor. Returns to Messier. A shot coming in from the left circle and a beautifully conceived play. And again, Peters is equal with a big one. Again, being in the right position enabled Peters to make the save. He saw the play being set up by Edmonton as they worked an excellent give and go by Messier to Cam Connors. And a quick shot by the youngster. That's right in the middle of Peters as he was well out on the angle. All right, Barber is out now with Kelly and Don Gillen. And we get a false draw in the circle to the right of Peters. Don Gillen brought up from the Brandon Wheat Kings, the junior, in his first Major League NHL game. Was really a stick out at the fall camp in, uh, up in Portland, Maine. And he's getting his first shot tonight with all the flyer injury. Buck taken by Buznick. He's in his own right wing corner. Hawk from behind by Messier. Loses it to Chipperfield. Tries to come out, does the Edmonton captain for a stuffer. Play broken up. Cam back along the Flyers' defensive left wing boards. Two Flyers, Kelly and Busnick in there with two Oilers, Messier and Pat Price. 
Bob Price coming here from the Evan or from the New York Islanders and is a lot happier here in Edmonton, even though the team is not as well balanced in talent as the Islanders. He didn't like what was going on there. They had a lot of uh, superstars and a lot of dissension in the team, and he's here. He's a lot happier player now. Flyers going out with Vermegaard. Hill centered by Lintzman with Daly and McAlarkey. No changes for Edmonton. Face off to the left of Peters. 2-0 Philadelphia. We played 3.31 into the second period. Leach and McLeish, the flyer, go get a chipper field steal. Closes it. And here comes Vermegaard and Lintzman. Two on one. Lintzman over the line. Oh, poke check that goes to Hill as he lost the play by indecision in on the left circle. He could have taken the shot. Now he gives it away to Daly. Drive blocked with a broken stick on the ice. Here comes Edmonton up on the near wing. Messier can only slide it from center ice in on Peters. And Peters rolls it around and gives it away to Chipperfield. Clear play. Centering pass in front. Shot save. Rebound save. Oh, my. Thank Bob Daly for the second cover-up as the Flyers just caught the puck away carelessly and it almost cost them. Boy, failure to communicate was a part of that play. As Peters had the puck, Daly and McElharkey weren't sure what Peters was going to do with it. They both went to the front of the net to take away some of the Oilers that were coming in, and Peters put it to the side, but both Daly and McElharkey didn't see where the puck was going to go, and it enabled Edmonton to come up. Peters made the good save, the rebound came up, and then Daly, like an excellent goaltender, stacking his pads and sliding and making the save, did it, deflected it into Peters, who covered up on the rebound. Well, Cam Connor, who scored last night for Edmonton on a play similar to that, had a chance at his fifth, and Daly came up big. 4.05 going second period. Edmonton not uh, uh, shy tonight. They've outshot Philadelphia 17-10, and they've had some very, very good chances. Peters has been marvelous. Now it is Hunter for Edmonton, winding it around from the left wing of the near board, taken away by Prop, and he shoots it up ice as he's out with Clark and Leach and Barnes with Ben Wilson. Stolen by Clark, offensive left wing board. Tries to center it, does off the side of the net. In there as Prop tries to get it out in front to Leach. It's blocked off, comes out in front. They scramble for it, taken off by Hicks and ices it, but it looks like it'll go right in on Peters and does. It'll be a shot as Peters himself gets it to center. Leach off the near boards, taken by Clark. Over skates, breakaway for Weir. In, takes open net score. Comes up with his 24th goal of the year on a very heads-up play as the puck bounced away from Bobby Clark. Ended up on the stick of Weir, who very quickly came in. Peters moved out to try and cut the angle down. But Weir had a lot of time. He made one fake. Peters went down. He went in around and had the open net. And tucked it in for the 2-1 lead now for Philadelphia. Oilers' first goal. And for Stan Weir, his 24th of the year. And a very heads-up play by the Oilers centerman. Well, the Flyers have been playing a lot of careless hockey and around their own line without a lot of the precision, and it cost them. Now up ice, it's dumped into the Edmonton zone. Vogelin with it along his own right wing side, clears it to center, and Barber is out with McLeish and Gorenz, cleared right back in. Vogelin again along the right side, gets it up near boards to Gretzky, will come with Callaghan and uh, McDonald over the line, being hawked by McLeish, tries a drop pass. They break it up, and out comes McLeish. Vogelin going to try to cut him off. Shot from the right side, and Vogelin does make the save. And the rebound is cleared off Billy Barber's ankle, played behind the net to Gorenz. Gorenz looking from behind, looking, looking. Stopper from the side, another shot, and Corsi is equal, and Gretzky goes back behind his net. Checked off by Gorenz, but it rolls to Fogelin up along his own right wing boards and through off the stick of Callaghan to center. Dumped by Billy Barber from Buznick down behind the Edmonton net for Philadelphia as the Flyers make a partial change, and they have Barber out there with Gorenz, and now Kenny Lintzman. They shoot at the center ice. Gretzky takes it offensive side of center over the line. Tries a left circle shot blocked by Buznick, and Buznick clears it off the center ice right wing boards into the Edmonton blue line area. Now the Oilers shoot it back the other way. It goes over the Flyer goal line as Dupont is out there with Busnick and Lintzman on with Gorenz and Barber as up they come through at center. Dumping it into the Edmonton zone. Now the Flyers are going to complete the line change, but going to cost them an icing to do it. 13.58. Remaining in the second period, the Flyers two and the Oilers one. Paying a buck for a gallon of gas is driving many truck owners to diesel power. Do you want to cut your fuel costs in half? Switch. Go diesel. Go Caterpillar. Why? 
because in the past five years, over half of the mid-range diesel trucks made in the U.S. are powered by CAT engines. See your truck dealer and ask him about CAT. Spend a few extra bucks for a CAT diesel up front. Don't waste them back here. Appears that the ice might not be too good out there tonight. The puck's bouncing a lot. This one bounced away from Clark, and Weir very quickly pounced on it, went in all alone and tucked it in. And it's now 2-1. to one. Ed or Flyers over Edmonton. Messier out with Connor and Chipperfield. The Flyers go Lintzman with the puck along the near side, dumped by Pat Price behind Peter. Peters lays it, and there was an oiler coming around for a stopper, shot by Lowe, and Peters had to come up with a good save. Flyers awfully careless in their own end. Frank White pass dumped into the zone. It eludes the Flyer, but it was not an icing since the goaltender had to make a play. Here we come at 2-on-1. Messier with Chipperfield. Messier left circle shot. Peters equal the rebound taken off by McAlargy to Kelly along the far side. And to Gillen away to McAlargy at center ice for the Flyers. At the Edmonton line, Don Gillen to the right board. Tries to go back with a pass into the slot block behind the net. Boom, he goes down over Lintzman. Lintzman throws it out in front. And it was swept to the near side by the Edmonton defense, Pat Price. And the Oilers try to come into center. Taken away by Bob Kelly. Kelly to the near side to Lintzman. Lifts it into the far corner of the Edmonton zone. Knocked down and controlled by Kevin Lowe. The Oiler defenseman will carry into center ice. Edmonton out shooting the Flyers 21-11 and have been sparked by that goal and have now come on charging and we're going to get a penalty interference against the Flyers up at center ice and it will give the Edmonton Oilers their second power play and an opportunity to tie. 12-58 remaining in the second period as Lintzman gets the call. Flyers now have five of the game's ten penalties. The Flyers are not really on very sharp penalties so far as Lintzman really interfered with Chipperfield, you can do it to a certain degree and get away with it. But you cannot stand there and constantly hold the man up as the players and the puck move from two zones. Ron Harris was right there, called the penalty at 7.02. Edmonton will have their second power play. On the air against Philadelphia, they are 0 for 7. But again, let them get it on often enough and they'll all fork them in sooner or later. Flyers led the first game here 2-0, and then Edmonton came back with a goal in the second period and won midway through the third by Stan Weir to tie it, and Weir's out there now, along with Lumley and Hunter, and Hicks back with Silton in defensively. Silton in a master, although he's a small player, with handling the puck on the advantage. Puck behind the Philadelphia net, kicks away from Barber, and up ice along the near side, it comes to Ben Wilson, and as he challenged, he just dumps it the rest of the way. Barber up front with McLeish, and Ben Wilson back with Barnes. Flyers two goals by McLeish and then Leach here early in the second period on the power play. Here comes Risto Silton at the flyer line, over the line, pass Barnes. Right circle shot and a good one. Peters covered the short side. Barnes loses it behind the net. Silton has a man in front, Hunter, but the Flyers jam it up behind the net. And finally, Ron Harris, as there was indecision whether the player did not stop action with a face off in the flyer zone as Edmonton has outshot Philadelphia 10 to 3 in the first seven and a half minutes of the second period. Another well, very eager right now. It's sparked by that goal by Weir, but the Flyers are playing very controlled in there. They're not as, as spirited as they have been in the past right now. I think they're just a little bit lax. They cannot take this team too lightly. This team is a very good goal scoring team. Gretzky, Callaghan, and McDonald out there still with Hicks and Silden in. McLeish along with Barber and Ben Wilson who has the puck behind his net. Rolls it up on the far side. Barber will try to get it past Hicks and slaps it off the Edmonton defenseman stick into the neutral zone. Back to Silton and in the Oilers zone. Plays up ice to Brent Callaghan. Loses the puck. Barber in. Shot. And Mio there. Of course he to save Barber again. And he had the net. And we're going to have a penalty against Edmonton for pulling Barber down from behind. And careless plays at both ends. And Billy Barber with a chance to give the Flyers a shorthanded goal. But it is an Edmonton penalty with 12.07 remaining second period. 2-1 Philadelphia. Introducing the 1984 Fairmont, the right idea for today. Aren't you glad you bought a Fairmont? I sure am. The right idea for today. Yes, sir. Aren't you glad you bought a Fairmont? And how? Fairmont's the right idea for today, with even better four-cylinder mileage than last year. In sixes with four-speed transmission, no car beats Fairmont's estimated MPG. Aren't you glad you bought a Fairmont? Glad, glad, glad. The right idea for today. Back here, we'll pause for station identification on the Flyers Hockey Network. 
WTAF-TV, Channel 29, Philadelphia, Taft Broadcasting, serving the Delaware Valley. Brett Callaghan picks up the minor for hooking at 7.53 to take away that power play advantage for Edmonton. They'll play five aside for a minute and nine, and then when Lintzman comes out, no further penalties occurring. The Flyers will have a power play of 51 seconds. Here against Farber. Goes to Leach in front, but he can't make the shot. Back to the left point. DuPont looks. Can't drive. Goes into the offensive right wing corner. Leach from an angle. Gets it on the rebound, and Clark in front. Shot. Marvelous save by Corsi on the rebound. Oh, my. Corsi comes up with a super save to keep it two to one. Oh, I'll tell you, Clark had a good chance to twice of it to put the Flyers up by two again as Leach's that angle shot was not handled very well by the goaltender and no wonder Leach shoots that puck so hard it's very hard to control the rebound let alone come up with a save but Clark took the shot of course he came out and the shot hit him on the glove he was able to force the puck to stay there and freeze it for the faceoff Weir with Hunter and uh, low out defensively with Price Face off to the left of the Edmonton net Clark, Leach, Busnick and DuPont for Philadelphia Flyers will get a man back in 58 seconds. Each team with a man in the box. Low behind his net. Chase from behind by Clark up along the near side. Rolls at the center ice to Weir, who has to turn back into his own end for Edmonton. Right wings it at the flyer line for Price. Through to Hunter, but he's offside as he preceded the pass by a stride. Uh, Dave, we have some scores from out of town, uh, Gene. The Colorado and the U Rangers are tied at one in the first period. Washington seven, New York Islanders one, which is a final. Pittsburgh 5-3 over Boston. Detroit 7-6 over Quebec. Buffalo 9-1 over Los Angeles. And first period scores. Toronto 1-0 over Vancouver. Chicago 3-0 over Minnesota. Low with a faceoff at center over the flyer line. Left wing corner. Holes looks to dump it toward the point. Gets it back to Hunter. Hunter pivots away from Clark. Challenged by Leach. Straight away to Price. Price with a good shot. Gets in front. They tip it through to Peters. Does Hunter looking for Weir on an excellent conceived play. But... Peters put the big glove on the puck and nothing happened. Hey, Hunter was just trying to slide that puck through the three players that were stationed in front of Peters and Peters down there picked it up very quickly as Weir was a little upset with himself. He did not get to the front of the net quicker. He might have had an opportunity to redirect it past Peters as Peters did not see it till the end. Big weekend for Buffalo. Win 7-2 last night at Montreal. 9-1 to home again tonight against Los Angeles. And Pittsburgh who hadn't won in Boston for a century Won both games there this year. 4-1 in the beginning of the season and 5-3 tonight after losing in Pittsburgh to the Bees last night, 6-4. All right, it'll be Weir against Clark. Played by Price into the air circle and Weir shot on the stuffer is wide to Peters left. Played behind the net and the Flyers just getting out hustled right now and Edmonton with a good goal opportunity. They're playing five aside. Finally, Leach gets it up to Clark out of the Flyers' right wing corner and throw it center with DuPont, two on two. They crisscross over the line along the near side. Clark challenged and dumps it behind the Edmonton net. Leach is in there. Beautiful play by Kevin Lowe to poke it past him up on the Edmonton left wing side at center ice. As the penalty is over now, and Lynchman is out. The Flyers on the power play. They look for Lynchman at center. The pass is broken down by Weir. Finally controlled by Lynchman. Cross eyes to DuPont. Up and over the red line at the Edmonton line along the left wing. Throws it far corner. Taken by Lynchman. Puts it in front quickly looking for Ververgaard. Gets it back on the carom. Looks to go back again. Gets it back on the carom. Tries to come to McLeish. Blocked three times and he's dumped finally by Hunter. And then the puck is iced by Edmonton. 26 seconds left on the penalty to Callaghan. Flyers on their third power play opportunity. Now it is played in toward the net on a deflection. Corsi tries to clear out. Barber keeps it in. McLeish lets it roll behind the net to Ververgaard. He's challenging there by Colin Campbell. In comes Lintzman along with McLeish. Lintzman comes out with a puck to the left point. Barber is shot. Directed wide to the long side by Ververgaard. Wilson is bumped off the puck by Siltonen. And up ice comes Callaghan as the penalty is over. Out of the box comes... The man, he's in front, and the pass deflected from Gretzky, away from Callaghan, and down around behind the Philadelphia net, centered again by Gretzky, and it's taken away by Peters behind a barber, as the flyer look, we're going to have a penalty, and it's another interference call on Lynchman against Gretzky, way far behind the play, and the Flyers pick up their seventh penalty of 12 calls by Ron Hatter in the second consecutive one, the Lynchman for the same offense. 9.52 remaining second period, 2-1 Philadelphia. McDonald's. For you parents who don't speak Klingonese, he's saying people of Earth unite and bring yum, your yum. kids to McDonald's for a uh, Star Trek meal. Uh, that's a regular hamburger, fries, soft drink, a McDonald's and cookie sampler, and a Star Trek prize. 
He's both Rush Shrugging. Oh, he has five different boxes based on Star Trek, the motion picture, action scenes, jokes, games. He says, take it from a father who knows. His kids love him. McDonald's Star Trek meal available for your kids now. Wow, Wayne Gretzky is getting a lot of extra attention by the Philadelphia Flyers, only it's at the wrong time. Ken Linsman gets his interference call at 10.08, Edmonton's third power play. They are 0 for 2, 0 for 8 on the season against Philadelphia. Penalties are now even at 6. Hicks back with Silton in, and up front Callaghan with McDonald and Gretzky. They roll it down to the corner behind the Philadelphia net. Daly in there, he skated off. McDonald tries to dump it behind, and it's played off the near boards to the point kept in by Sildenen. Left side to Hicks from the blue line. Shot wide of Peter. Gretzky behind the net, but there is McAlargy blocking the puck with a skate as it came out to Peter's left, blocking it right against the short side post. Jack McElhargy, who is originally from Edmonton, his mom and dad came in here from Vancouver to watch the game. He has aunts and uncles, and a, his brother as well came in to watch the game. Playing very well for Philadelphia in the first period and a half. Very sound, very steady. Similar style of player as Frank Bade is. Myers have Barber out with McLeish and Daly with McElhargy killing the penalty. Gretzky at center, Brett Callaghan on the right, B.J. McDonald on the left. Hicks at the left point, Silton in on the right side with a faceoff. Back to Silton in. Puck in the flyer zone, left side to Hicks. Looks toward the net. He's got, Mc oh, he had Callaghan along the near side, and that was where the pass was attempted. As Daly up ice, over the line against Silton in. Drops to Silton in, takes him off the puck, and back comes Edmonton, two on one. There they've got a man in Callaghan, he scores! Callaghan picks up the goal on the power play to tie the game. As McLeish got back but let him go. As an excellent pass by Gretzky found Callaghan who went to the backhand and lifted it up over Pete Peters' sprawling pads to tie this hockey game. Excellent play by Gretzky in a fine finishing play by the left winger Brett Callaghan. His 14th goal of the year, Callaghan on the power play. Well, that line teams, McDonald and Gretzky, the assists. The Flyers again, they coughed up too many plays, and that time they got caught. Now it's played by Chipperfield in the offensive left wing corner for Edmonton. Back along the far boards, Al Hill just kicks it up into center ice. Racing for it is Prop trying to put pressure on Kevin Lowe. Lowe takes it behind the net. Hayes tied up, rolls it up on the right side to DuPont, who slaps it back down behind the Edmonton net. Rolls to the Flyers' offensive right wing board to the point to Busnick, trying to get it back, but it's blocked off nicely and cleared into center ice by Edmonton. Busnick gives it away to the Oiler line and turning up at his own line and then back into the zone and up ice is Mark Messier for the Oilers. Lifts it on the carom into the Philadelphia zone to the left of Peter. Chipperfield in there. DuPont tries to get it up along the near side to Busnick a prop. Prop knocked down. He gets up. Puck rolls to the blue line. They can't get it out. Edmonton doing extra hustle. We're going to have a penalty against Philadelphia as Chipperfield dumps it toward the net. Trying to get a piece of it was Cam Connor. Flyers knock it free and now the call is made. Well, Ron Harris is calling an elbowing call on Ryan Prop after Prop was literally tackled on the right wing by the Edmonton Oiler Ron Chipperfield. He got up and tried to get back at him. He picks up the minor penalty. So the Flyers again will be shorthanded for the third time this period. Their fourth shorthanded situation in the game. Prop elbowing is the call. Time of the penalty, 11.47. Well, the Flyers first trip in here, as we said, they led 2-0 in the second period, and then had a fight for their lives to escape 2-2 on the same format as following tonight. And again, Edmonton with a big second period. They've scored twice. They've had 12 shots. The Flyers have had eight. But they've been swarming after the goal by Leach on the power play put Philadelphia up early in this period, 2-0. Out there is Lumley with, or make that canner on the left with Chipperfield, centered by Messier, and same pair of point men. Silton in and Hicks. And the Flyers go Clark who gets it to the point. Silton in reads it, pokes up along the near side. Clark digs it out, rolls it into center ice. Flyers have Clark and Leach out along with Barnes and Wilson. Chipperfield goes back to his own line. 
Eight minutes left, second period. Score is tied at two. Still in left wings and into the zone, looking for his man on the near side, Chipperfield. Clark takes a whack at it. Chip loose by Silton, but onto the stick of Wilson. Wilson up at center. Stick handling back at his own line. Turns away from the charge of Connor. Up by still at center ice. Through another man. Now turns back to his own line. As the youngster trying to keep that puck onto a stick and kill some time. Now rolls it through on the near side. Pass Silden it. Finally dumps it back to his own line in a masterful bit of penalty killing. That was really brilliant. As they get up to Leach at center ice with Clark. Two on two over the line. Right circle drive. Hit the outside of the net. In front again. Leach sweeps it away as he tried an angle poke check toward the net. Now Gretzky is out there as the... Oilers have a minute left on the power play. Barbarov now with McLeish. Gretzky storming up the middle at the flyer line. Tries to cut through on the near side. Loses the puck. Billy Barber coming up along his left wing side. Looks for McLeish, but it's tapped down and controlled by B. Make J. McDonald. Waits for his line to clear the zone. McDonald, Callaghan, and Gretzky out there. As the play goes to Hicks. Rink wide pass off the stick of Gretzky. Offensive left wing corner. He has a man in front. Good and fade to him. Comes around to the near side. Out in front. Short side shot. Peters covered it. As you're so wary of the pass that you leave him alone and he had the good opportunity to come out in front for the shot. 30 seconds remaining on the Flyers shorthanded stint as it's gone uh, from good to bad here in this period. They let 2-0 and then power plays, a power play goal, a careless breakaway by Weir. 2-2 the score. Down into the Philadelphia zone, the puck is dumped. It's played by Callaghan, but then he's taken off by Busnick. And McLeish along his left wing side will able to drive it all the way into the neutral zone. Eight seconds left on the prop penalty as Price gives it up ice and through into the zone to McDonald. Over the line along the right wing. He's got Callaghan breaking for the net. Pivots along the near side to the point to Price. Dumps it in and the Flyers get a man out of the penalty box. They have prop up through to Leach and McLeish at center ice. Over the line, Barber. Barber looks on the near side, loses the shot, dumps it down behind the net. Centering pass off the side of the Edmonton goal and of course he clears it up. Now it's still behind the Edmonton net. Taken by Pat Price with less than six minutes remaining in the period. 2-2 the score. As up by Callaghan gets it to Hicks. Right up the middle. Gretzky on his left. In looking back for Callaghan and for Hicks. Puck tipped behind the Philadelphia net. Broken loose by Oilers. Right out through the goal mouth from Gretzky. Rolls to the far side. Callaghan gets it. Straight away to Lovely. Shot blocked and rebound in front. Open net. Score by Gretzky. Poor checking by Edmonton. They just kept the pressure on Philadelphia, and usually it's the other way around. They just kept coming and coming and coming and working that puck around, played heads up. As Peters came up with two good sh- saves off Dave Lumley, but Wayne Gretzky going right to that open net as it was left unguarded. Peters having to come out to cover off the angle. Had the puck in the crease and just tapped it home for the lead goal. Gallagher. And Lovely will get the assist. Flyers into the zone, up the middle. Lindsman right on into the near side to Ververgaard. Again, the Flyers getting too fine. The play broken up, ice by the Oilers. And the call will be made behind the Philadelphia Nets, touched up by Ben Wilson. All right, three goals in less than 10 minutes. The Oilers lead with 5-11 remaining in the second period. 3-2. Four years you'll be an art major in college. BSFS certificates can help you make it. The things you want, the things you do, the places that you're going to, we can help you make it. All the most popular BSFS certificates pay more than ordinary banks, so you'll have what you need sooner. We can help you make it. High rates, short terms, low minimums. We can help you make it. Wayne Gretzky, as all great goal scorers, always go to the net. And this time he did, as Lumley had an excellent opportunity twice to try and find the range behind Peters. But Peters Peters away out. Gretzky standing right there, had that hole open net to fire it home for that lead, 3-2. Buck back to the near side. The Barnes backhander to the net, way over the top, as Verbergart was spun around in front by Campbell. And again, the Oilers ice it. Barnes racing down behind his own net to the corner left of Peters. Gets there before Dave Lumley. We get a stoppage of play. Bob, you know, even before the Oilers scored, 
with 2 nothing Philadelphia. You can see the Flyers doing a lot of static passing around their own line, and they seemed really to start to fall into the lethargy, and thus, bing, 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 they're down behind. Hey, the Ratner Rink invites you to learn to skate at one of their group lesson classes for children and adults, or if just skating is your thing, public skating sessions are held every weekday and six times on the weekend. So grab your skates and come on down to Lancaster Avenue and Spring Mill Road in Villanova, or call 215 the area code and the number 527-1230. Puck up along the Flyers' offensive left wing, right wing board. Ben Wilson can't contain it. It comes to center as Lintzman is out there, along with Hill and Ververgaard. Now Ben Wilson will lead a charge through on the right wing into the zone. Ververgaard is bumped off by Colin Campbell, rolls it behind the Edmonton net. Now Dave Hunter gets it up on the near side. Norm Barnes penetrates offensive left wing corner behind the net to Hill. Hill looking to throw it in front, but Edmonton doing some good checking behind their own net and not allowing the Flyers to maneuver. Four shots on the four checking pressure. Now it comes to the blue line and played out the center where Weir has it. Looks on the right side for Dave Lumley in. He'll get a right circle shot, but then it's taken away nicely by Ververgaard who had to pick up the defensive position. Here comes Hill from Ververgaard. Through at the Edmonton line, over the line, back to the point to Barnes as Hill is knocked down. Ben Wilson on the left circle into the corner shot. Wide of the short side as Wilson was drilled. And Edmonton warming up to the task with the lead now are not going to let it get away without a fight. Puck off the stick of Bob Kelly. He'll charge through at the line past Dave Lumley. Right circle pass into the zone for Gorence is offside. With 3.51 remaining in the second period, the Oilers have outshot the Flyers 17 to 8, outscored them 3 to 1, and lead 3 2. Well, the Oilers are starting to warm up with some solid body checks as Hill came across and tried to set up. Lumley came in and landed a good solid check on Hill as he was looking back to try and pick up the trailing Norm Barnes. And when he looked there, all of a sudden, Dave Lumley was right on his doorstep and put him on the ice with his check. McLeish with Gorence and Kelly. They scored the Flyers' first goal with Musnick and DuPont back. Kelly penetrates, loses the puck in the Edmonton zone. Price back there with Kevin Lowe. Kelly steals behind the net, looks to center, does, but it's off the back of the net and never comes out in front. And it's played off by Messier to his own left wing corner and throw it center ice, looking for Chipperfield from Cam Connor. But the Flyers take it and drill it right back in. Price set up behind his net, works out to the left, tries to get it out in the center, and the Flyers had a chance to pick it off, but it comes into the neutral zone. DuPont then, as he falls, has it taken away by Messi of Edmonton along the left wing side. Fires it cross ice into the Philadelphia zone. It bounces. Kelly has trouble handling it. Just what Bob Taylor described. Puck bouncing a lot and throwing defensemen and forwards off. Now the puck goes up ice, and as Gorence tries to control with a skate, it caroms up into the seats, and we'll have a neutral zone faceoff as the Flyers facing a deficit. 3-12 remaining in the second period. Edmonton 3 and the Flyers 2. Frank Mundus belongs to a very special circle, the Schaefer Circle. Because in the war between man and shark, he wins every time. At Schaefer, we brew our beer to taste great every time. Beer after ice cold beer. So come, come into the Schaefer Circle. Edmonton is just completely outplaying Philadelphia in this second period. They hold a 29 to 16 edge in total shots right from the opening whistle, and they're just doing it on sheer work and hustle. First time the Flyers have coughed up three goals in a period since their loss at Minnesota, 7 to 1. In their zone, cleared but not out to the left point. McElargy toward the net, score! Don Gillen, his first National Hockey League goal on a tip. And the game is tied at three, and how about that for a thrill for the Edmonton Brandon Wheat King youngster? Well, I'll tell you, he is one happy fellow. He was a little nervous before the game, couldn't even sleep last night, but it was a good play by Clark to get the puck back, and then Gillen just moved right to the net, just redirected the puck, no more than maybe eight inches, but it was enough to go by Jim Corsi, who hasn't had that much action here in the second period. But it's a tie hockey game. Don Gillen, his first National League goal on one of the, his first shifts of the second period. Well, Jack Bacalaki in his fourth flyer game picks up his fourth flyer assist. And that's it. McElargy on the assist to Gillen at 17.02. And the Flyers, who needed a life ring thrown to them, and a rope got it there in that youngster's play. 
Now up by Spark, rolling it through for Billy Barber. Tries to cut inside DJ McDonald. The puck to the point, kept in by McAlargy. Tries to go to the net. Stripped of the puck by Sildenit. And here comes Edmonton. Two on one with Just Daly back. Over the line, Gretzky's got his man open on the far side. But Clark, with that extra drive, is able to intercept, pick it off, and prevent the play. As there was Brent Callaghan in that famous position to the side of Gretzky waiting for the pass. Now it's the Flyers back the other way. Gillen into the zone offside. And as he did a little ragging, sent Billy Barber in. And then as a little hello, knocked down Doug Hicks. For each Flyer goal, well, you know what the story is in February and January. $100 from Schaefer Beer to the Flyer Wives charity. $2,700 and county. Thank you, Schaefer. Huck. I'll tell you, Don Geller, we, I, I talked with him this afternoon, Gene, and asked him if he was going to go up for a rest, and he says, no, I don't think I could sleep. He says, if I couldn't sleep last night, I sure the heck aren't going to sleep this afternoon when it's just hours before game time. All right. It's prop out there along with Leach, centered by Lintzman, and then as the Flyers penetrate right side, Ben Wilson shoots it into the seats and does a little tug and shove on the far side. Bob Ben Wilson, I think, wants a little piece of the Hunter because Hunter gave him a shot when he was going off the ice on a line change, and he looked back, and I think he's just going to wait his time and maybe try and get even. Flyers went up 2-0 with a power play goal in this period by Leach, and then Weir, Callaghan, and Gretzky made it 3-2 for Edmonton as they ice it once again for the umpteenth time in the game. The call will be made as it wraps around Peters to his left, and Ben Wilson there for the stoppage of play. But then Don Gilla just got the thrill of a lifetime in his First NHL game at 17.02, deflecting home McAlogy shot for his first in the NHL, and we're tied at three. Ben Wilson, again, coming on very strong for Philadelphia, playing very steady defense, and what a job he did on the power play with Brian Propoff. He ragged that puck for almost a whole minute just by himself, and when he did, even the fans here at Edmonton gave him a, a very polite round of applause for a job well done. Leach, top of the right circle in the trigger position. Lintzman will try to get him the puck. Gets it to him, but slow, and it's poked away in the last minute by Dave Lumley. Out in front, it comes again. Shot by Prop. Shot by Leach, and the rebound. Another shot. He scores! Boy, Philadelphia have come to life here around the net in front of Jim Corsi. As Corsi came up with three saves, and then Leach finally on his second rebound, put it home for his second goal of the game, 33rd of the year to put the Flyers again up. But it was a good uh, play by Leach and by Prop going to the net. Of course, he stopped three, but he could not come up with a fourth rebound. So Leach at 18.01 from Prop and Lisbon puts the Flyers up by one. Flyers goals came 59 seconds apart. Prop over the line again. Right circle drive, and he had it measured. Just shot wide and high of the short side as he had the Corsi going the wrong way. Now Dave Lumley back for Edmonton at the Flyer line. Tips it in offensive left wing corner. Says a man in front. He's got Fogel in, now he tries to come out to Hunter, it's blocked off. Then it comes out in front, swept away by Leach, kept in and a shot wide of the net from the left point by Sildenit. Now Ben Wilson up to prop. He fails to get it past Fogel in. shot by Lumley from the right wing board. Haters the save. Now it's checked as Barnes behind the net, rolls it up on the right side. Campbell toward the net, Peters the save, shoves it behind for Barnes who's grabbed and tackled in there by Messier. Now we're going to have the call. And it's going to be against Hunter. And he was caught at 18.48. Hey, another $100. Thank you, Schaefer, that goes to the Flyer Wives charity. Thanks to Reggie Leach's 33rd goal and his second of the night. That fund now at $2,800 and counting. Well, Philadelphia comes up with their third power play of the game. Or of this period, rather, fourth of the game was Hunter. Grabbed more Barnes around and spun him around and off he goes for holding. But... Excellent play by Leach as he had two cracks at it. Finally on the second one, he found the hole behind Corsi to give the Flyers the lead. 18-48, so the Flyers, if they need the full power play, will have it split into two pieces, one extending into the third period. They'd like to get one here. They are one for three on the night. They'd like to get one here and assume that two-goal lead. And Bobby, I would think if the Flyers cash one in now, after that the comeback with finalized by Gretzky's goal, and the Flyers go back in 2-0. That's got to take, take the heart out a little bit. So it's a big play right now for both clubs. Daly back at the point with Clark, and up front they have Hill with Bervergaard and uh, Gorenz. Down behind the Edmonton at Pat Price is going to roll it up on the far wing. It goes to the point, kept in beautifully by Clark as he blocked off, but then it's played by B.J. McDonald along his left wing side. He's checked off. Flyers fight for it, played by Doug Hicks to the near side. Knocked off as Gretzky. 
Herbergard behind the net, gets a return, can't come out in front, now dumps it out there. Edmonton tried to headman Gretzky, you know, and as soon as that play came loose, Gretzky started up ice on the gamble that if he gets the puck, the, he'll get a clean breakaway. Now the puck is cleared up loosely on the near side. McDonald offensive right wing corner. It's tapped and out along the near side. Oh, and then boom! Hill is red, but it's a two on one. Berbergard in a drive. Saved by Corsi. Unbelievable on the near side. Hill was just mugged. And the play was allowed to continue behind the net. Berbergard can't control it. We have seven seconds left in the period. Puck down behind the net. Berbergard's got to get it out in front. Up shot by Daly goes wide. One second, no second. And the end of the period comes with a score. The Flyers four and the Edmonton Oilers three. And coming up during our intermission, our TV viewers are going to see another segment of shootout. Well, on the radio side, you'll hear me in conversation with the Flyer scout, Jerry Melnick. Then Bobby Taylor will be back to be talking with Paul Holmgren. And near the end of the period, we'll have this wrap-up of a wild and zany second period. The Flyers started it with a one-goal lead, ended it with a one-goal lead, although there were six goals evenly divided in that second 20 minutes of play. That's it. Two periods of play gone. It's the Flyers four and the Oilers three as our intermission activities continue after this. Hi, Ken Garland, WIP Radio, where, as you probably know, we play your songs. But in a typical 15 minutes on a WIP morning, we'll also play your news. While in Harrisburg today, the governor said... Your sports. Reminder that you can hear all the play Your weather. Your traffic. Even your snow emergencies that are closed in Philadelphia County. Don't we know him? I'll bet you do. He's on WIP, where we play your everything. 1,250 miles below freezing lies Florida, where Eastern Airlines has a warm spot waiting just for you. Now, for the first winter ever, you can fly to Florida at 40 to 50% off on Eastern. Florida, come down and let warm things happen to you. Back at the Edmonton Northlands Coliseum, Gene Hart with Bobby Taylor. And Bobby, of all the goals in the second period, I happen to forget probably the most historic, and that was the tying goal that I originally credited to Reggie Leach and really belongs to a Flyer rookie in his first NHL game. Yeah, Don Gillen, Gene, picked up the tying goal. Well, overall, team offense in the National League. The Flyers, of course, leading Los Angeles. Average goals per game, 4.25 to 4.21. Minnesota's close third with a 4.15. And overall team defense, Flyers are in third place behind Buffalo and Boston. 2.75 against for Buffalo, 2.81 for Boston, and Philadelphia behind a 2.98. And usually when you get a real high-scoring team and they're not that strong defensively, they result, or they rely, rather, on their high-scoring offense to keep them and win games for them, but the Flyers are combining both good scoring and some fine team defense. Bob, contrary to the first game, when it was apparent that fatigue was a factor, the Flyers really hanging physically, that doesn't seem to be the case tonight. And the 19 Edmonton shots in the second period, while we give them credit, I still think the Flyers started to drift mentally and were thinking about coming home. That's part of it, Gene, but you can't take anything away from Edmonton. They're playing a very good hockey game. Uh, Pete Peters has just been outstanding for Philadelphia. Of course, he has played solid, but not as spectacular as Peters. Had he been able to come up with a tremendous game, I would think Edmonton might still have the lead. But the Oilers are forechecking well. They're moving the puck around. They're going to the holes, and they're getting a lot of good shots away on Peters, as well as a lot of, uh, or a big number of shots. Of course, they've come up with some big wins here. They defeated the Islanders twice here. They've whipped Montreal here, and L.A. and Buffalo and Pittsburgh and Toronto. So there are no slouches in their own building. Well, Rick Straight-Claw again, the backup goaltender being called here due to Phil Meir having to return to Montreal because of an illness in his family. Straight-Claw flew all day. Went from uh, Maine to Boston to Toronto to Edmonton. Got in here about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Came right to the rink. This is time to get suited up to uh, become the backup goaltender to Pete Peters. But he'll enjoy a really nice respite out here. He'll have a whole hour to look around Edmonton and enjoy the sights before coming back on a 2 a.m. plane going all the way back east. Sometimes you, you know, it just seems fruitless, but I know St. Claude is very happy to be up in the Big Apple, even though it's in a backup role right now. 
Jim Corsi, the man who's has to came up with some big saves in this third period to keep Edmonton in it as they trail by one goal, four to three. Gretzky is out there along with McDonald as the Oilers have 48 seconds to kill on the Dave Hunter penalty. Defensively, Price with low, and the Flyers go Lynchman along with Burbergard and Prop and Clark back at the points with Daly. Now it is McDonald over the line with Gretzky. Tries a shot from the left circle through the screen, and it's broken up by Philadelphia. Prop down to Daly in the far side. Stolen by Gretzky. He's got McDonald and tries to shoot instead from the goal line to Peter's left. Hits the side of the net, and up ice comes Lindsman through at center. Now over the line. Holes inside the line. Holes at the point. Holes. Straight away to Daly. Shot to the net. Good save through the screen of Prop by Corsi. And it is Gretzky behind the net with 17 seconds left in the penalty. Clearing up to McDonald at the flyer line or the Edmonton line, and he shoots it the rest of the way. Ten seconds left in the advantage. The Flyers have one rush if they can make it a good one. Mark coming up through into the neutral zone. Has Lindsman on his right. Into the zone. Good head man pass. Going right on in. And he tries to feed cross ice. Berbergard not there. The penalty is over. The Flyers maintain the puck. Now they've got Daly right circle. Oh, and Corsi was knocked a foot up into the air for that drive. But hung on with the rebound for the stoppage of play. Ladies and gentlemen, win a trip to the Bahamas. Enter the Flyer Fantography Contest sponsored by Photomat. You just hand deliver your Flyer Action Photo to your Photomat store or mail it to the Fantography Contest. Care of the Flyers, Broad and Patterson, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The zip code is 19148. $50 in cash will be awarded for the photo of the month, and the grand prize will be a trip for two to the Bahamas. Maybe you can turn your photo into that fabulous dream trip. Well, that is real hard shot by Daly, high shot. Caught Corsi very uh, solidly, and he uh, really is shaken up with the shot. It knocked him right down, but he had enough presence of mind to follow the puck and hang on for the faceoff, but he's still suffering from it. And it takes a, a couple of seconds, almost to a minute, to uh, shake away the effects of the shot, but he appears to be fine now and ready to resume play. All right, Chipperfield out with Hunter, and it will be McLeish on. Keeping the puck in along the left wing circle. Barnes tries to slap it in. Rolls behind the Edmonton net. Al Hill there. He's checked. Gorns tries to go to the net. McLeish digs it out. Looks for Gorns. Is checked. Gorns takes the puck. Out of the circle. Right out in front. Loses it to Barnes. Barnes a shot to the net. Percy with a grab with a left glove. As right there stationed alongside hip to hip was Ben Wilson. Right there. Barnes' backhand was up high. And of course he had just reached out with that glove and picked it out of the air. But... Flyers had four men in deep. They've been burned a couple of times on that same similar situation. Messier, Tripperfield, and Connor out against Gorence, McLeish, and Hill. Barnes with Wilson face off the Flyers' offensive right wing circle. Right it goes to the near boards, tapped away from the Flyers. They scramble along the near side, and the Oilers clear at the center. Then Wilson, a nice circle past Messier, grabs him, but it is Gorence who wraps the puck down the right wing boards. Whoop! Connors and Ben Wilson at center ice, and here we go. Well, Connors is a pretty big guy, and Ben Wilson is too, and they both dropped their gloves and started to get ready. As Connors came back now, got a good right uppercut on Ben Wilson. They both have him down. He's got two good uppercuts on Wilson. Now Wilson has gotten loose and started to throw right hands as Connors has gone to the ice now, grabbing a hold of Wilson's sweaters, but both of them got solid punches in. Connors got two real good uppercuts on Ben Wilson. And it all started right in front of the pe or players' bench of the Edmonton Oilers. And the linesmen of them cut or separated. Randy Mitten has Wilson. Claude Bashard has Connors. And they're still gesturing towards each other as they appear they want to have some more. But good solid hits. Pretty good fight. And Wilson got two uppercuts from Connors. And then he landed a couple of good overhand rights to him. And they're still trying to get at each other. All right, while we pick up the official penalty call, 18-31 remain in the game. It's the Flyers 4 and the Oilers 3. Reach for the sun. Hello, sunshine. Reach for the sun. Hello, sunshine. Hello, mountain dew. There is only one mountain dew. Nothing tastes or feels quite like it. Smooth like a cool breeze on a sun-drenched afternoon. Reach for the sun. Reach for Mountain Dew. Well, 
they're both in the penalty box now. They're still talking, but they both dropped their gloves, squared off. The Connors put his head down as Wilson wailed in, and they both got a hold of each other. Connors got real, two real strong uppercuts on Ben Wilson, and they had to scrape a little bit off the ice. He might have uh, bloodied his nose or cut him a little bit, but they both got some excellent shots in. They went to the ice. Now they're in the penalty box. But I believe Connors is picking up an additional two minutes, Gene. Unsportsmanlike conduct. And thus the Flyers will now enjoy a power play. They just finished one off their third, fourth of the night. They'll get their fifth. And Bobby, an observation for one of the rare times in the game. The Flyers have the greater number of power plays as Edmonton has had four. Philadelphia now with their fifth. And the Oilers just killed off 48 seconds of one that extended over from the second period on Dave Hunter. They had just 41 seconds of even play, and now they're short a man again. Daly out with Clark and Lintzman on with Prop and Verbergard. Gretzky on with B. J. McDonald and defensively Price with Hick. Flyers contain at the near side. Now Clark going in away from Gretzky, deep into the right wing corner. Goes around behind the net. He's got Ververgaard with him. Goes out to the left wing circle. Now pivots. Looks for help. Goes back straight away to the blue line. Daly at the blue line, into the near circle, looking for Ververgaard. But Hicks breaks it up. But Lynchman controls along the right wing board. Out into the circle, to the side of the net, Clark. Goes straight away to the point, but nobody there. And it goes all the way down the ice. Racing after it is Gretzky, going to put pressure on Peters. But he winds it around to the flyer right wing side to Ververgaard, who has to go back deep to Clark. Clark now leads the charge with a minute 20 on the advantage. 4-3 Philadelphia, early third period. Flyers up into center, lifting it into the zone, broken up and taken back to center ice by Philadelphia's Clark. McDonald fights for it there, and then we get a back and forth at the blue line along the near boards. And a stuttering power play, and we have a whistle with the minute 10 left on the penalty, the minor call to Cam Connor. Not only is Blair McDonald and Wayne Gretzky the leading point getters for the Oilers, but they are out there killing penalties a number of times as well. Glenn Sather is very confident in their checking ability. Well, Gretzky has one, and Blair McDonald has one on the shorthanded stint. Now Norm Barnes back with Billy Barber at the point. Gretzky forechecking Barnes. Puts it in front of the flyer net to Billy Barber. Barber circles away from the forechecking of McDonald and now turns and starts out of his own zone. 4-3 Philadelphia, two and a half minutes gone, third period. Flyers on the power play. McLeish over the line. Left circle shot, save. Percy had the rebound, poked away to Gretzky on the near side, and he just winds up and rips it down the ice, and it skips behind Pete Peters. 40 seconds on the advantage. McLeish, Kelly, and Leach out there, and Barnes with Barber as Leach up through. Crisscrosses with Kelly. Rolls it down the left wing boards behind Corsi to the near side. Bob Kelly takes it out in front. And Corsi recovers his leech along the right wing boards to the point to Norm Barnes. Back along the near side. It goes behind the net to Kelly. Weak pass looking for McLeish. He tries to get it up along the deep right wing boards to Leach. Stolen away by McDonald and Ice is in, and that'll probably do it. As the Flyers may regret having literally three of the first four minutes of the third period on the power play and unable to edge their lead greater than 4-3. Now Leach up the middle at the Edmonton line. Left wings to McLeish. Back to the point to Kelly. Shot! Save! And a good screen in front by Leach and Corsi came up big. Rear back. The penalty is over. Edmonton charging at the flyer line. Colin Campbell breaking for the net. Drop pass and a shot by Peter Driscoll. Rebound by Hunter. And Peters hot the short side to his right to keep that one away. As Weir and Warren Barnes go down, Driscoll puts it in front to Hunter. Back to Barnes. In front for Weir. And the Flyers tie that one up as Campbell battles Leach for it, punches him in the head. Three Flyers, three Oilers along the boards. Flyers defensive right wing corner. And we get a stoppage of play. Now we're getting a lot of pushing and shoving in the corner again. As tempers are very high here in the third period. Peter Driscoll, Norm Barnes, Reggie Leach, and Colin Campbell. But Edmonton did a fine job of killing off that power play advantage that Philadelphia had. Billy had one real good shot on net. It was a good blocking glove save by the goaltender, Corsi. The only real threat. So with the team skating at even strength now, Edmonton would really try and force Philadelphia in their own zone, and they've been doing it very well so far in the game. They pull pull the four... World Hockey Clubs. Flyers had a rally at home to beat Quebec one by one goal in Quebec, one by one goal and two goals in Winnipeg, one by one goal at home against Winnipeg, one by two at home against Edmonton. We're tied here and lead by one in a squeaker. So the Flyers have really yet to blow out anybody, Bobby. 
They tied in Hartford. They beat Hartford at home 4-2. And the worst beating they've given any of the World Hockey Association clubs was a 6-2 win over the Whalers at home. 16-0-2 remain in the game here. It's the Flyers 4 and the Oilers 3. Come on, Miss Brown! You can make it! Talk to us! DSFS Bonus Banking can help you make it. The things you want, the things you do, the places that you're going to. Bonus banking is like a checking account that pays interest. Do all your regular banking at PSFS. We can help you make it. The bank that pays you more gives you more. We can help you make it. Yeah, Ben Wilson and Cap Connor in the penalty box. Five minutes each for fighting. Plus, Connor picked up a two-minute additional penalty for unsportsmanlike. 129 was the time of their penalty. They'll still have time to serve. That's... Lintzman out there with Weir Winsterdahl. Busnick behind his net to the far side for DuPont. Comes out of his own left wing circle. Charged at the flyer line. Up ice to Gorens. Through at the Edmonton line for Philadelphia. Right wing board. Goes in there. Loses the play. Kevin Lowe takes him off. Hunter goes into that corner along with the Flyers. Al Hill. And they jam it up to the left of Corsi. Flyers face off in the offensive right wing circle. Well, Al Hill has been on a scoring streak of late. Uh, picked up a goal in Winnipeg. A goal in St. Louis. And or Chicago, rather, and uh, has been playing excellent hockey. He's out there quite a bit. Sees a lot of action on the power play. We're against Lensman. Offensive right circle for the Flyers. 4-3, Philadelphia, 15-47 remaining in the game. Rink wide pass to the far board. DuPont takes a shot on Corsi. Saw it all the way. Rebound again into that far board. Gorenz is in there, loses it. It's poked loose to the near side. Lintzman is there. Throws it right out in front. Flyers poke at it, and we're going to get a high stick call, I believe, against Al Hill. For knocking that puck down with a stick above the shoulder, we'll have a neutral zone face-off. Well, we have another final team. Chicago went on to shut out Minnesota, three to nothing at home, and two second-period scores. The New York Rangers and the Colorado Rockies are tied at two apiece in the second period. And in the second period in Vancouver, Vancouver leads the Toronto Maple Leafs four to one. Well, Harold Ball has been on this disastrous road trip for the. The Leafs, who have now lost 10 of their last 11 road games and are bidding for a 12th one. Rink wide pass into the zone by Clark. The Daly throws it back across in front of the nut. Knocked down his prop, but still on his knees, tries a shot as he's on with Clark and Gillen. Play broken up and Edmonton out along the far side. Messier taking it in the neutral zone. Checked away by the Flyers' McAlargy and then drilled back in the Flyers' zone to the left of Peters. Daly back with McAlargy and up front they have Gillen and Prop centered by Bobby Clark. Outlet pass along the near side, taken in the neutral zone. Played back in the flyer zone by Edmonton's Peter Driscoll. Now it is Don Gillen who got the Flyers a tie and really turned the game around. Philadelphia hanging on, had been outscored three straight. He got the goal, Leach tied it up, or put the Flyers ahead, and they've been that way ever since. Now Messier back at the flyer line, tries a pass on the far wing. That was intended for Chipperfield, broken up by Philadelphia. And playing through into center ice is the Flyers' Bobby Clark. Checked in there by Messier. Puts it on prop stick at the center ice circle. Prop wants to get by and does along the near side past Hicks. Hicks ties him up. Prop throws it in front to Gillen. He tries a shot from the near circle. It's blocked. It's played to the near side by Gillen again. Tries to fight for it. Battles for it along with Driscoll. The prop in front. Tried to turn for the shot. And then lost the opportunity. And the Oilers shoot at the center. Jack McAlargy from the left wing boards. Wraps it down again behind the Oiler net. As Philadelphia brings out Busnick and Barnes. And they have Lintzman on along with Barber and Berbergard. The Oilers give it away at center. Here comes Lintzman with that blaze of speed up the middle. Over the line. Left circle. He got a drive. And it was deflected short side. Rebound by Berbergard from Corsi's left. He makes the save. It's poked behind by Barber. Lintzman can't handle it. And here comes the ever-dangerous Gretzky. Stripped of the puck by Berbergard. Who gives it back to Van to Edmonton. And here they come at center right. Along the near side. Driscoll breaking. One-on-one. -on -one at the flyer line. Going into the corner. Short side shot. A save by Peters. Gretzky cut off behind the net by Barnes to allow Billy Barber to swing out to the right of Peters and carry it into center ice for Philadelphia. At the Edmonton line, 60-footer. Grabbed eye high by Corsi. Drops behind the net to Calligan. Calligan along with McDonald and Gretzky. McDonald at center. Looking on the far side for Fogelin breaking down behind the Philadelphia net. Lines past Peters up along the Flyers' right wing side and cleared by Vermegaard from Busnick. Off the Flyer bench hitting Al Hill who was standing up and looking at the play with great interest. Face off. What do we got? Some more bumping here? Well, Kenny Lintzman and Wayne Gretzky had been 
bumping and uh, going at each other throughout the game, and Lisbon just went down the ice with Gretzky had his stick up high around Lisbon, but Lisbon doesn't want to have another penalty called, and he just went to the bench for a line change. We've had no scoring in this third period, and though Edmonton had 19 shots in the second, the Flyers have limited them to just two here through 641 of the third. They, the Flyers, have picked up five, seven. And they've had two power play opportunities, but have not been able to increase their lead, which, that's, which is at the minimum now, 4-3. The big line is out there, the Gretzky line, out there against the McLeish, who's on with Kelly and Leach, DuPont with Daly. Buck back at the Edmonton line, and B.J. McDonald turns, back passes to Campbell along the left wing at center ice, comes through at the flyer line, rolls it into the zone, and then Garotes. Andre DuPont by diving up high and blocking him off. Puck stolen. McDonald's going to get a right circle pass into Callaghan, and he tried a shot shot in from close at Peter's left, and Peter's hung the post and kept that away, and that was a dangerous situation. Puck back in the flyer zone. DuPont up along the far wing, gets past Gretzky, rolls the puck into the uh, Edmonton zone. There's Fogelin, four check by McLeish. The puck kicks free behind the oiler net. Campbell up along the near side. Daly tries to make a play. He not only blocks the puck, but makes sure he blocks Callaghan from coming out as the puck rolls loose behind the oiler net. Lee Fogelin, Edmonton, as Lee spins around with Blair McDonald on the near side. It's Gretzky over the Philadelphia line. Drops to Callaghan. Callaghan looking back along the right wing board. Goes behind the net. Daly tries to cut between two men and poke the puck and then hand passes it up to Leach. Nothing called there. He gets it back again and slides it off beautifully to Bob Kelly at center. Stolen by McDonald over the line on the right wing for Edmonton. He's got Gretzky breaking for the net to the left of Peters. Down goes McDonald as he's pulled by DuPont and they're calling a penalty. It comes at 7.57 and we'll have power play number five coming up for Edmonton. 12.03 left in the game. 4-3 Philadelphia. I'm a mileage nut. I checked all the figures, and I got a Ford Fairmont. The four-cylinder mileage is even higher than last year's. And do they have a six-cylinder? With standard four-speed transmission, no six, foreign or domestic, beats Fairmont's estimated MPG. Datsun's four-speed doesn't beat it. Toyota doesn't beat it. Citation, the GMX cars don't beat it. Carol! Ford Fairmont, combined with great service, makes your local Ford dealer the obvious choice. Let's pause now for station identification on the Flyers Hockey Network. WTAF-TV, Channel 29, Philadelphia, Taft Broadcasting, serving the Delaware Valley. Just as Ben Wilson came out of the penalty box after serving his major for fighting, DuPont goes in for hooking. 7.57, the time of the penalty, the fifth power play for the Oilers. Flyers with two power plays are one and part of one in this period and not allowed Edmonton any momentum. Let's see right now if they can pick it away from the Flyers. They have Weir out with Hunter and Lumley, and they have Silton in back with Hicks. And the Flyers go Barber and Clark along with Barnes and Ben Wilson face off to the left of Pete Peters. Claude Bouchard wants Clark, and Weir set properly on the tees that are planted in the ice. Goes in front to Lumley, rolls loose to Clark. He can't get it out. Weir gets it back to Silton at the point, and he winds it down behind Peters, who lets it roll up in the Flyers' defensive near boards. Now Hunter goes back into the offensive left wing corner, trying to play it out to the point, and there it goes to Hicks. Train shot, well wide of the net, and all Lumley could do was jump out of the way, and then the puck comes over the blue line and taken back in by Silton and offside, and Claude Bouchard emphatically makes the point that it was offside. Well, I, I would think Bouchard has to be the top linesman in the National Hockey League right now, Gene. Very rarely misses a call. He gets right down on top of that blue line, and he's not a very tall player to begin with, or ref to begin with, but he gets right down that knee, and he gets right close to the play, so he's right there to make sure that puck stays in or comes out. Up Selden in, ragging throw at the flyer line. Left wings past Gretzky. Goes down over the flyer goal line. Assisted up on the far side. Stolen by... Lumley behind the net to Gretzky. Back to Lumley. He's got Weir in front. Back to Gretzky behind. Look at first stuffer out in front again. Oh, shot by Lumley. And it was partially blocked by Ben Wilson. Gretzky at the side of the net. Looks to pass. He's got Weir out in front. And he fans on the shot to the point to Hicks. Hicks back to Weir on the near side. Broken down by McQuaish. He can't get it out, but finally does on the second try. Oh, my. Weir looked like he was in great position to the right side of Peters. Now a vice. Leak or McLeish blocks the play. And we're going to have 15 seconds, 13 now, 12, 11, 10 on the Edmonton advantage. Exactly five minutes left in the game. Rink wide pass. Coach pass Lumley down into the corner left of Peters. 
Norm Barnes has it and shoots it out the center. Lowe has to play it off to the near boards as the penalty is over. Billy Barber out. Less than five minutes remaining in the game. Flyers hanging on to that one goal lead as they kill that beautifully. Up by Al Hill at center. Has Barber with him. Throw into the zone. Barber left circle. He scores! Well, that has to be an excellent opportunity. Boy, I'll tell you, for Flyers to salt this game away with that goal by Billy Barber as he was fit perfectly by Al Hill. He just took the shot. Of course, he was away out of the net. It looked like he had everything covered off, but he didn't get all the puck. It squeezed between his glove and his pads and had enough steam on it to find its way over the goal line. The Flyers have regained a two-goal lead with only 4.37 remaining in this third period. Big goal by Billy Barber. Hill and Wilson get the assist for Philadelphia. Bobby, you know, Arnie Barber's had a thickens of a time on the road hitting posts and crossbars and getting stoned. He comes up with a big goal. Messier along the near side tries to keep it in. Lowe does, as almost everybody on ice is along the Flyers' defensive right wing side. They lift it, does Edmonton behind the Flyer net. Chipperfield goes for it, but Linsman has it and just lifts it high in the air into the neutral zone. That was the big goal. They kill the penalty that was called against Barber and then Barber back on his next shift on ice to give the Flyers another $100 to their charity fund, thanks to Schaefer Beer, that count now at $2,900 in county. Now into the zone, Fogel and dumps it, but he has two men, both Connor and Chipperfield offside. 3.56 left in the game, the Flyers who led 2-0, and then were caught in the second period and trailed 3-2. Got a pair of goals late in the second, and one here in the third to lead it 5-3. Well, the Oilers have to be a little disheartened. They played so well tonight, they played well enough to win, really. Pete Peters has been very strong for Philadelphia. And then Barber coming up with that goal off the glove and pads of Jim Corsi to give them that two-goal cushion with 3.56 remaining, as you mentioned, Gene, and it's pretty tough the way the Flyers could check to come back with two. As I mentioned, Bobby, coming into this period, I didn't think fatigue was responsible for the letdown in the second period. Uh, their excellent play and perhaps a little, uh, little laziness in the mind. But they've come on strong here in the third period. They've gotten the goal. They've killed a pair of major penalties in the sense of major because of uh, that power play of Calligan, uh, McDonald, and Gretzky out there. It's always dangerous to give Edmonton that kind of edge. They have been scoring one in four and against Philadelphia at the present moment in the three games, the Edmonton Oilers are one for 12 and perhaps that's the reason Philadelphia now is going for its second victory along with a tie and a victory and a tie here in this building in their final effort of the year. They dump it into the Edmonton zone. It's cleared out by Colin Campbell, but Clark puts a good check on. Leach over the line and a shot from the right circle is blocked into the end seat by Edmonton defenseman Lee Fogelin. 3.47 remaining in the game. Don't forget, we'll be back on the radio network this Thursday night at 8 at the Spectrum against the Minnesota North Stars. And then next Saturday, the Flyers' second trip of the year to Pittsburgh with the first game. You recall a strike canceled the first one. They'll meet the Pens out there. And then a week from tonight, back at the Spectrum radio and television again with the Boston Bruins. Flyers trying to contain the puck in the Edmonton zone. The Oilers shoot it out, but Busnick has it there, rolls it in deep, and it's cleared back out again by Calvin Campbell of Edmonton to the flyer line where DuPont was on with Busnick, and up front they have Clark, Prop, and Lee. They roll through on the near side to Prop. He falls, tries to fall and pass the puck into the uh, zone for Reggie Leach. Gets it back, right circle, dumps it into the offensive left circle, played back to Clark by uh, DuPont at the point. He tries to dump it toward the net, and that's broken up by Fogelin, and that never had any rhythm to it. Fogelin into the near side, looking for the breaking winger, Dave Hunter, but DuPont broke that up. Now it is Stan Weir turning, plays on the far side into Lumley. Lumley tries to get inside DuPont, who makes an excellent play for the second time in about 15 seconds to break it up. Now they go through to Gretzky. Gretzky's pass is aimless into the flyer zone to Clark. Clark up along the left wing of Philadelphia's prop and through in the neutral zone. Leach over the center ice red line, just bats it down behind the Edmonton net. As out comes Hill along with McLeish and Gorance and defensively Wilson with Barnes. Here comes Gretzky, always dangerous at the line. Going to the near side, pass and a shot. Throw a screen left wing by McDonald and Peters got that high off the shoulder and kept it away. As McLeish back at center, looking for Al Hill, breaking through the defense, he's in. Fake shoot, save by Corsi. In front again, the McLeish is shot and Corsi grabs it and plays off to his left. Beautiful conception of that play and Al Hill trying to score for the fourth straight game. Was stoned by the goal turn, McLeish was on the rebound. 2-13 remaining in the game, 5-3 Philadelphia. As up ice it came, and they had uh, Calligan out there along with Gretzky, but Ben Wilson picked the pass off. 
Gates back into his own zone for control. Left wings at the Barnes. Barnes to Candles pass. Two men in the center. Ice and feeds pass. Gorance, but then over skating was Calligan, and Gorance picks it up at the Philadelphia line. 155 left in the game. Hill is bumped by Doug Hicks, but drives the puck down behind the oiler net. McAlargy out now with Daly, and it is Ferbergard with Barber and McLeish. As up ice comes the McDonald down behind the Philadelphia net. Tripped up by McAlargy, who gets up and rolls the puck up to the point. Kept in by Fogelin. Right side pass in front. Look out for a shot here. Open net in front. Saved by Peters and a glorious save. Oh, my. He just stoned Blair McDonald's bid for number 32. And to put the Oilers within one, with a minute 31 remaining in the game, Flyers five and the Oilers three. Why use a There Tomorrow package service when Sprint's Eastern Same Day service gets it there today? Eastern tags it and bags it and gets it on the next flight out. And that's over 1,400 of them to 85 cities every day. Your package is there today, guaranteed, or your money back. So when it has to get there today, you've got to hand it to Sprint's Eastern Same Day package service. Great play out of the corner as McAlargy trying to screen in front. There was the play. Beautiful play to McDonald, and he was right on the doorstep with a backhander, but Peters again, as Bobby says, stacked the pads and stoned McDonald. The Flyers still have that two-goal cushion with a minute 31 left in the game, but that could have made it hair-raising. Up through at center ice. Here comes Herbergard. Wink wide pass to Barber. He's over the line in front. Shot! What a save again by Corsi as he robbed Billy Barber at the other end. Strange, you've had eight goals. That does not imply great goal, Denny, but believe me, it's been tough. The shot's 40 for Edmonton and 32 for Philadelphia. And the 32nd one by Billy Barber, right from the slot, through a screen, and the Corsi was equal. Minute 21 left, 5-3 Philadelphia. Flyers bidding for their 15th road victory of the year. They've only won 14 all last year. Shot from the draw by Verbergart. That hits Corsi. Deflects off to Vogelin of Edmonton, and he drives it into center ice. Connor controls along the offensive left wing boards. Into the zone to Messier. He'll try on Peters. Then is taken off the shot by McAlargy. It comes out to Chipperfield. Stolen away by the Flyers. Bob Daly around behind his net. Stick handles in front of Chipperfield and throws it to center ice along the near board. We're in the last minute of play, and Edmonton now failing by two. He's got to pull it all out. Puck behind the Philadelphia net. McAlargy winds it around to the far side to the point. Fogelin dumps it toward the net. It's wide. Peters plays it behind. And it's rolled up by McAlargy to the far side to Barber. And Barber tries to get it out once. Does the second time to Verbergard. Verbergard puts it into the neutral zone. And all Lindsman will do is kill some more time. Very quiet in now as they partly emptied the building. And Edmonton realizes they're going down to their eighth home defeat in their first and four games. There it comes prop up as he gets over the line. Left circle shot. Of course, he had that one. And he's had a busy game, as has Pete Peters. 23 seconds left in the game. And we're going to get a hold. And I believe a penalty in the latter stages of the game. And it appears to be Colin Campbell, who's now pushed at by Bobby Clark. And Colin Campbell did a little roughnecking on Clark, and Clark took offense to that. And it looks like uh, Clennon will go to the box, and that will even the penalties at 10. It will give the Flyers a power play. But with 22 seconds left, I think it's all academic. And let's see if Claude Bouchard and referee Ron Harris sends Campbell to the locker room for the night. I guess not. It's just going to be Colin Campbell. His second of the night. He picked up the Oilers' first penalty of the game at 30 seconds. He now picks up perhaps the last Oilers penalty of the game at 19.38. Well, the Flyers challenged as they gave up three consecutive goals in a 10-minute span in the second period to go from a 2-0 lead to a 3-2 deficit. Then Don Gillen got his first National Hockey League goal at 17.02 of the second period to tie the Flyers. Leach gave them the lead just 59 seconds later. And then with just 4.37 left in the game, Billy Barber gave the Flyers a little breathing room. Again, the penalty against Campbell, 19.38. Flyers will get an academic sixth power play of the game. That makes 12 all told in the game. And they're just one for five, two for eight on the season against Edmonton. Clark is out there, along with Prop, Leach, Buznick, and DuPont. Maybe they'll try to get one, just for effect. Flyers are going to close out a jumbo road trip. It started in Washington with a tie in the last four seconds. Then road victories at St. Louis, at Chicago, at Winnipeg, and now at Edmonton. 
Now the puck goes back to the point. Leach winds up. Shot. Corsi the save. Rebound taken by Weir loose. And he lifts it down the ice. And with 13 seconds to go, Flyers are going to win number 33. And they're unbeaten now in their last eight. Six, oh, and two. So here comes another run at the streak. Four seconds, three. DuPont from center ice. Corsi the save. And the siren goes to end the game with a final score. The Philadelphia Flyers five. And the Edmonton Oilers three as the Flyers all go around to greet Pete Peters, who came up very, very big tonight as the Oilers scored three at 37 other sumptuous shots. And he came up time and time again with big, big saves. That's it. 5-3 Philadelphia, but don't go away as we'll be back with a Pepsi postgame show following this. Hockey has been brought to you by the Pepsi Cola bottlers of the Delaware Valley who want you to have a Pepsi day. By Eastern Airlines, we have to earn our wings every day. By McDonald's Family Restaurants, nobody can do it like McDonald's can. By PSFS, the bank that pays you more, gives you more. We can help you make it. By your local Ford dealers, new cars, used cars, service parts leasing, all under one roof. And by the F&M Schaefer Brewing Company and the Schaefer Circle of Sports. Travel arrangements for the Flyers made by Haddon Travel. When you think Hawaii, think Haddon Travel.